It's red. Um, welcome, everyone. We are doing a full set review for Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth. Uh, we're going to chop this up on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on there. Uh, I will love it. And yeah, we're on to red. We've done black and blue and white. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in those. So if you haven't yet and you've somehow managed to just watch the red video first, jump back and watch all of them. Um, this is a really cool set. It's a full set. It's the summer supplementary modern horizons type set. Um, it is not pioneer or standard legal. It is commander, uh, historic, modern, uh, legacy, yada, yada. So let's jump into red. I appreciate you being here. Uh, first up in red is battle scarred goblin. I suspect there's going to be a lot of goblins in red. Uh, one in a red for a 2-2 goblin warrior creature. Whenever a battle scarred goblin becomes blocked, it deals one damage to each creature blocking it. Dang, that's pretty good. Next up, we have Book of Mazel Mazarbol. Mazarbol? I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm butchering all of the Tolkien names. Um, two in a red for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, amass orcs one which means you get to create an orc army token and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it or put a 1-1 one, one counter on an existing orc army token. Uh, chapter 2, amass orcs 2. And then chapter 3, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, oh, and gain menace until end of turn. So that's just a, kind of an aggro-y type play on turn 3. It's not too bad. Uh, next up is Breaking of the Fellowship. Oh no, Boromir. Why? One in a red for a sorcery, target creature an opponent controls, deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that player controls. The ring tempts you. So you get to force your opponent to have two of their creatures fight? I don't know why I did this. Why is this the international sign language for like butting heads? I guess this is more, this is like sexy stuff. Um. Why is that sexy stuff? What is this? Anyway, this is fun because you get to force one of your opponent's creatures to fight another creature that they control. It's very cool. Very flavorful as well because obviously Boromir gets tempted too much by the ring, tries to take it from Frodo, and the Fellowship have to end his Boromiring life. That was a stretch. Next is cast into the fire. One and a red for an instant. Choose one. Cast into the fire deals one damage to each of up to two target creatures or exile target artifact. So you get to banish a ring or you get to kill a couple of little guys. Um, you see here the ring kind of melting, broken. Frodo's getting snatched up by an eagle and Gollum is in the lava where he's not supposed to be. Don't go in the lava. Next up is Display of Power. One red red for an instant. This spell can't be copied. Copy any number of target instants and or sorcery spells. You may choose new targets for the copies. This is really fun because you can play this after people have started popping off with things. Um, you can also play this as a big combo finisher if you're doing a storm thing. Um, playing a lot of, you know, cheap little burn spells. You play this at the end, and then you get to ca recast all of those burn spells or whatever. I think that's pretty fun. It's a lot of setup. Um, it's not really going to play well in Limited at all. Uh, but in Commander, I think that's really cool. Next up, we have Yomer, Marshal of Rohan. Two red red for a 4-4 Human Knight Legendary Creature with Haste. Whenever one or more other attacking legendary creatures you control die, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this is really interesting because it doesn't say that they have to be blocked. It just says that they have to die. So you could th sacrifice if you had a way to sacrifice um, one of your own legendary creatures to just earn a second combat phase this turn. 
I think that's really neat. I think there's going to be some interesting things uh, happening with the Eomer card. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Eomer sounds right. Kind of looks right. Um, but I don't know. Next up, we have another Yomer of the Ritter Mark. Rider Mark? Ritter Mark. Four and a red for a 5-4 human knight legendary creature with haste. So he's gotten a little bit bigger. Whenever Eomer of the Ritter Mark attacks, if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. I mean, that's just simply not as good as the other one, to be fair. Um, yeah. You know what I, I'm going to do? I'm going to move this down just a skosh. I think it should be like there-ish. Then we'll center horizontally. Okay. Next up, we have Erebor Flamesmith. Uh, look at that. That's badass. Uh, one and a red for a 2-1 dwarf artificer creature. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erebor Flamesmith deals one damage to each opponent. That's really good in that weird pinger deck that came out with the Warhammer. That pretty neat. Next up, we have Urkenbrand, the Lord of Westfold. Look at that. No hair on the top of his head. Tons of hair off of his head. I love it. Can I make it so that I don't capture the cursor on this one? Wait. Where did that go? Oh, there. No, I have to not capture the cursor, period. Okay. Well, I'd rather not have the cursor in the background than capture. Maybe I should just make them two separate sources. Who knows? Um, Urkenbrand, a Lord of Westfold, is three red for a 3-3 three, three human soldier legendary creature. Whenever Urkenbrand or another human enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus O oh until end of turn. That's not too bad. Fall of Care Andros. Three and a red for an enchantment. Whenever, an, whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, amass orcs X where X is that excess damage. Then you can pay seven and a red. Fall of Care Andros deals seven damage to target creature. So you can pay eight, burn something that has one toughness, amass orcs six and kill that thing that's not bad i kind of like that that's gonna be fun to play with uh next up is fear fire foes look at that, that horse is just being run down x and red for a sorcery damage can't be prevented this turn fear fire foes deals x damage to target creature and one damage to each other creature with the same controller so you could burn something big and kill little things um, that's pretty neat. Next up, we have Fiery Inscription. The art on this is gorgeous. Uh, two and a red for an enchantment. When Fiery Inscription enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Fiery Inscription deals two damage to each opponent. Uh, the ring tempts you. So I've been showing this every single time we bring it up just to be sure that, you know, we're doing, uh, this set as much justice in the set review. Uh, basically, when the ring tempts you, um, you get an emblem named the ring. If you don't already have one, then your emblem gains the next ability and you choose a creature you control to become or remain the ring bearer. So every time it happens, you get to choose a ring bearer. Um, and as the ring tempts you more and more, you level up your ring and it's just all upside. There's actually no downside to the ring tempting you. Um, it's very odd because the ring tempting you in all of Lord of the Rings has been both negative and positive. Almost mostly negative, though. So the fact that it's all upside is very interesting. Um, there are a few cards that 
are stronger against ring bearers. So the fact that you have to give the ring to somebody um, is and can be a negative, um, but it's not necessarily a negative. So where were we? That was just the first time we saw the ring tempts you in red. So I just wanted to run through that dis uh, explanation just one more time. Next up is Fires of Orthank, Orthonk. Three and a red for a sorcery. Destroy target artifact or land. Oh. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Interesting. Destroy target artifact or land is pretty good. Next up, we have Foray of Orcs. Three and a red for a sorcery. Amass Orcs 2. When you do, Foray of Orcs deals X damage to target creature. An opponent controls where X is the amassed or army's power. So if this is your first time amassing orcs, then you're just going to deal two. If it's the 10th time you've done it um, and you have an orc army that's a 10-10 already, then it's going to deal 12. Uh, that's pretty cool. It's expensive, uh, but could be very powerful late game for sure. Next up, we have Gimli Counter of Kills. So there's a running gag in Lord of the Rings where Gimli and Legolas try to beat each other in how many orcs they can kill. Um, and they've designed a couple of cards around that because it's hilarious and really flavorful. Gimli counter of kills is three and a red for a four, three dwarf warrior legendary creature with trample. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, Gimli counter of kills deals one damage to that creature's controller. So it's also a nice little pinger. Um, if you're playing a burn deck or a dwarf deck, this is really good. Um, I think this is fun. Decent card. Then we've got Gimli's Axe. Two and a red for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three plus O. Oh. As long as as long as equipped creature is legendary, it has menace and its equip cost is two. That's a pretty decent equipment, especially at common rarity. Um being able to give a legendary creature menace is pretty powerful. And then we've got Gimli's Fury. Uh, I, if you don't know, um, Wizards of the Coast um, has a numerical system for their sets. So the sets have uh, set numbers. So this card is number 131. It's down there at the bottom left of the card. Um, and they determine... Uh, the set number based on col everything's grouped by color and then alphabetical order which is why we're getting a bunch of Gimli cards in a row um, so the order is not random it's just alphabetical Gimli's Fury is one in a red for an instant target creature gets plus three plus two till end of turn if it's legendary it also gains trample so that's pretty good I like that it's giving the creature um, the ability of the actual character card as well gains trample um, very cool next up we have Gloin Dwarf Emissary 2 and a red for a 3-3 Dwarf Advisor legendary creature whenever you cast a historic spell create a treasure token this ability triggers only once each turn um, historic spells include artifacts, legendaries and sagas uh, so there's a lot that kind of falls under that umbrella. Then you can tap Gloin, sacrifice a treasure, goad target creature. Goading means until your next turn, that creature can't attack, or that creature has to attack each combat if able, and attacks a player other than you if able. So if you, you're the only opponent it has, it has to attack you. Um, but if there are still other people at the table, it has to attack someone else. So goading can be pretty powerful. Next up, we have Goblin Fire Leaper. One and a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior creature. One and a red Goblin Fire Leaper gets plus one plus oh until end of turn. So it's got fire breathing. When Goblin Fire Leaper dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So that's really cool because you can activate fire breathing numerous times. So if it's not your turn and someone targets, say, Gar Goblin Fire Leaper with an ability or you use it to block, um, you can pump Gar 
you can use fire breathing to make Goblin Fire Leaper's power as high as you can. And then when it dies, it deals that much damage to target creature on opponent controls. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that little exchange. Next up, we have Grishnok, Brash Instigator. Two and a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Soldier Legendary Creature. Uh, when Grishnak Brash Instigator enters the battlefield, amass Orcs 2. When you do, until end of turn, gain, gain control of target non-legendary creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the amassed army's power. Untap that creature, it gains haste. So you get to mind control something that either matches or has less power than the power of your amassed orc army. Um, it's pretty neat. It's, again, really wordy. Magic cards aren't getting any easier to read or understand. So um, be prepared to learn and have questions if you're going to pick up Magic the Gathering. The next card is Haradrim Spearmaster. Two and a red for a 2-3 human warrior creature with reach. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn. That's not bad. Three mana for a 2-3 with reach is, is pretty doable. It's a good pickup in uh, limited for sure. Uh, then we've got Hugh the Entwood. This is a mythic sorcery. Three red red. Sacrifice any number of lands. Reveal the top X cards of your library where X is the number of lands sacrificed this way. Then choose any number of artifact and or land cards revealed this way. Put all non-land cards chosen this way onto the battlefield and put all land cards chosen this way onto the battlefield tapped. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is sort of awkward. Sacrifice any number of lands. So you pay five. Say you sacrifice all five lands. If you cast this on turn five, you have five lands on the battlefield, probably artifacts and other things that give you mana, but let's pretend like you only have five lands. You use five mana to cast this, sacrifice all five of your lands. So now you have zero lands. You look at the top five cards of your library and you get to put any number of artifacts or and lands onto the battlefield. So if you draw anything other than lands, you wind up with less lands than you started. If um, almost any time you're going to draw, you're going to wind up with less lands than you started. Um, so unless you have an abundance of lands or ways to get lands back from your graveyard, um, Hugh the Antwood might be straight unplayable. There's no way you're going to make that deal, period, in any scenario. Um, unless you've managed to like brainstorm or scry a bunch and you can purposefully set up a really, really strong, like you need that artifact very specifically. It's such a weird card. Uh, I don't like it. I don't think it's gonna be playable. I think this is straight unplayable. And it's a mythic too so people are going to open it and they're going to be like cool i got a mythic and it's like i can't this is garbage 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 next up we have improvised club or goblin one and a red for an instant as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice an artifact or creature improvised club deals four damage to any target that's not bad you can sacrifice something that only has one power and it deals four damage to something. It's not terrible. Uh, next up we have Moria Marauder. Red, red for a 1-1 one, one goblin warrior creature with double strike. So it's essentially a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. That's pretty decent. That's going to make it in a lot of goblin decks. Next up we have Oliphant. Five red for a 6-4 elephant creature with trample. Whenever Oliphant attacks, another creature you control gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and gains trample until end of turn. And it has mountain cycling for 1. Again, very excited that they're bringing uh, the land cycling back. 
this version is even cheaper than the last one we saw, uh, which makes it even better. I like land cycling. It's very strong, especially in limited. You draft these in your color or even in your off color, and you get to find that one plains or one mountain or whatever in your deck um, to make your mana requirements. That's really, really good. I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have Oleg High Crusher. Three red for a 4-4 troll soldier creature with trample. Oleg High Crusher can't block unless you control a goblin or orc. So it's only attack mode if it's by itself. If you have a goblin or orc friend, it can also block. Not great, not bad. 4-4 four, for four, 4 with trample. That's pretty decent. It's on par. Uh, next up, we have Quarrel's End. Two and a red for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card. Draw two cards and create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Pretty good. Next up, we have Rally of the Horn at the Hornburg. One and a red for a sorcery. Create two 1-1 one, one human soldier creature tokens. Humans you control gain haste until end of turn. That's not bad. Little pre-combat combat trick kind of thing for you. It's not too bad. Ranger's Firebrand is next. One red for a sorcery. Ranger's Firebrand deals two damage to any target and the ring tempts you. So that's upside, upside right there for one mana. That's a good card. You're not going to convince me otherwise. Next up is Relentless Rohirrim. Rohirrim? Three and a red for a 4-3 human knight creature. When Relentless Rohirrim enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Pretty boring. 4-3 uh, four, for four is not... is subpar. The ring tempting you might not be that great either, so... There was a 4-4 with Trample earlier, just a few cards ago. Uh, Rising of the Day is next. Two and a red for an enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Legendary creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Oh. That's a very good. I think that's a really solid enchantment. Um, everything you play is going to come into the battlefield with haste. Very strong. I like it a lot. Uh, next up is Rohirrim Lancer. For one red mana, you get a 1-1 one, one human knight creature with menace. When Rohirrim Lancer dies, the ring tempts you. Very cool. You don't, you don't see a lot of one ones for one with menace. I like that. My throat is really having a hard time speaking this much. Oh. Next up, we have Rush the Room. Um, we're about halfway through the set review, so my throat's going to have to figure it out. Um, Rush the Room is one red mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and gains first strike until end of turn. If it's a goblin or orc, it also gains haste until end of turn. That's not too bad. Nice little combat trick. Smite the Deathless is next. One and a red for an instant. Smite the Deathless deals three damage to a target creature. That creature loses indestructible until end of turn. If that creature would die, exile it instead. That is brutal. No indestructible. That could be the end of your fancy indestructible card. Uh, next up is Spiteful Banditry. X red red for an enchantment. When Spiteful Banditry enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to each creature. Whenever one or more creatures your opponents control die, you create a treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. So that's not too bad. I think this card would be bonkers if it didn't have the triggers only once each turn. Every time an opponent's thing dies, you get a treasure token. That would be really powerful. Um, it's also got a decent board wipe attached to it. When it enters the battlefield, you could pay, you know, five red red and it deals five damage to every creature. Um, but yeah, you're only going to get one treasure token. If you wipe the whole board, you only get one treasure token. That's a little weak. Um, I wish it didn't have that stipulation on it. It'd be really good. Otherwise, it's sort of just a board wipe. The second part doesn't really matter that much. Next up is Swarming of Moria. 
Moria. Moria. I, tr I was talking about the Return to Moria game the other day on a walk uh, with my partner, and I couldn't say the word Moria. Like, my brain just could not comprehend it. My mouth refused to do anything I was trying to convince it to do. It was very disturbing, and I just kind of... I don't know why that word is so hard for me. Moria. Swarming of Moria is two and a red for a sorcery. Create a treasure token and a mass orcs too. That's pretty decent. I like that. Uh, next up is there and back again. Three red red for an enchantment saga. Chapter one. Up to one target creature can't block for as long as you control this saga. And the ring tempts you. That's pretty good. Chapter two. Search your library for a mountain card. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle. Also pretty good. Doesn't say basic mountain. Chapter 3 creates Smaug, a legendary 6 6 red dragon creature token with flying, haste, and whenever this creature dies, create 14 treasure tokens. What? 14 treasure tokens? There and back again might be the most fun saga ever this smog creature token is really fun i like it a lot i hope the art is really cool i haven't seen the tokens yet uh next up is war beast of gorgoroth oh it's that thing down i was like what is that it looks like a stick it's this it's the boar down at the bottom not the stick at the top uh war beast of gorgoroth is four and a red for a five four beast creature Whenever War Beast of Gorgoroth or another creature you control with power 4 or greater dies, amass orcs too. That's not bad. 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four that spurs on your orc army isn't terrible. It's not great. Uh, next up we have Fires of Mount Doom. 2 and a red for a legendary enchantment. When Fires of Mount Doom enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to target creature and opponent controls. Destroy all equipment attached to that creature. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Destroy all equipment attached to that creature? Even if it doesn't kill the creature? That is painful. Oof. And then, because it's an enchantment, it sticks around. You can pay two and a red. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. When you play the, a card this way, Fires of Mount Doom deals two damage to each player, including you. That's really fun. I like that a lot. That's, that's good. That's a good time right there. My brother has a really powerful equipment deck in Commander. Um... And this seems like a perfect answer to it. You can just destroy everything attached to a creature. Um, that's brutal. Uh, and lastly, again, this is the collector number 295, because for some reason these last few cards, they didn't put in the normal set order. Um, I was going through Scryfall and there was just a bunch of single color cards at the very bottom of the list. And I'm not sure why they're there or why they're not included in the normal set order. I'm thinking that it might have been an afterthought or potentially cards that were designed for the commander set specifically um, being introduced to the regular set. And because they'd already cemented the card order and collector numbers, they had to just attach them to the end of the list. That's my thought. So the last red card is Goblin Assailant. One and a red for a 2-2 Goblin Warrior creature with no flavor text. Or just flavor text. No abilities. That's actually twice that the... Wait, well... What did we just look at? We were just looking at black, right? No, it wasn't black. Was it blue? No, it wasn't blue either. I swear. White. Okay, so. 
It's like literally another another card that was bumped all the way down to the bottom of the list has no abilities, just flavor text. I'm wondering if maybe these are from the the big panel cards. There's like a set of cards that are all taken from a giant piece of art and there's like a bunch of they make like 10 different cards or something. I wonder if all the cards that are stitched at the end of the list are all from those big murals or whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, that's it for red. I think that Fires of Mount Doom is really fun. Um, I think the, the fact that you can destroy all equipment attached to something is really brutal. I think that the Smog token is hilarious and really fun as well um but you know what i think the i think i might just like the smog token the best i don't remember being super excited about any of these really There's some good combat tricks in red. Um, I think there and back again is my pick for my favorite uh, red card. I know that's two sagas we've picked in a row, I believe. I think the black one, I picked the one ring to rule them all. Um, but this last, this chapter three in here is almost absurd and hilarious. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play. Uh, it might even be fun to play against. Who knows? Um, but... I think it's interesting, and that is all for Red. Um, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching. We're going to continue to do more here on Twitch and cut them up. So if you're watching them in order, enjoy the green side review next. Uh, thank you for being here. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to. We would love uh, a, a like or a comment on there. Let me know which red card you're most excited about uh is there anything that you're gonna build around anything that you're absolutely going to avoid let me know in the comments below if you're on twitch we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll come back and finish up the mono colors with green I'm very excited to look at green actually i know i'm not a green player